Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Dick van Oeveren and in this video I will be demonstrating the ClearPass Captive Portal functionality on Comware 7. The diagram shows you the setup where I have a client connecting to an access port, an uplink that is configured as trunk port, permitting the appropriate VLANs, and a services VLAN that provides the DHCP, DNS and Active Directory and ClearPass services. Before we dive into the configuration, I think it is important to provide some more explanation on how the captive portal functionality works in general. Understanding how things work will actually help you going through this video demonstration much easier. Let me first show you the process, how the client gains access. So what happens first is that the client connects to the switch and the switch performs a MAC authentication with ClearPass. The MAC authentication service on ClearPass is configured in such a way that access is granted automatically, however with limited access. Upon the first MAC authentication the user is authenticated and ClearPass returns specific values for web redirection and an ACL, as you can see here. The client will see a login screen for web authentication and once the web authentication is successful ClearPass will send another accept uh, message to the switch telling the switch to shut down the port and enable the port again causing a new MAC authentication to take place. However in the second MAC authentication ClearPass will know that the user has authenticated and it will push a different set of VSAs to the switch, uh, causing the client to get access to network resources uh, that are granted. It is important to know which Conway 7 switches support the captive portal functionality. They are the stackable switches, the 5130EI, 5130HI and the 5510HI switches at the moment of this demonstration, running the minimal code that is shown here. For captive portal functionality to operate, the switch has to support the RFC 3576 that describes change of authorization messages. The Comware 7 switches supports the COA messages that are listed here and so there's one important one which is the bounce host port. That's an important one for the captive portal. ClearPass can send this message to a switch telling it to shut down and enable a port causing a new authentication to take place. Another important configuration item here is that on ClearPass the Comware 7 switch also known as the NAND device in ClearPass has to be configured as a Cisco device because Comware 7 is uh, capable of understanding the Cisco bounce host port COA message. And then finally for the uh, URL redirection, uh, the, uh, we, we have to use a specific radius VSA from H3C which is called the AV pair. This VSA can push the redirection URL and ACL that is required to allow DHCP, DNS and web portal traffic. Now let's dive into the configuration. I will start with the switch configuration. First step is to configure a radius scheme where we provide the authentication and accounting information. So let me show you that one. Uh, radius scheme. I've created the CPPM one. And if we display this here, um, so what you can see here is we are configuring the IP address of the ClearPass server and we are providing the keys. And we are also setting a NAS IP. That's optional, but it's best practice to provide a NAS IP so that ClearPass uh, gets that NAS IP address from the uh, from the net client. The uh, second step is to configure a domain where we assign the radius scheme for LAN access. And let me show you the domain, which is pretty straightforward. So authentication for LAN access, we are assigning the radius scheme CPPM. The third step is to configure a radius dynamic author server. And let me show you that one. Radius dynamic author server. 
So this configuration is required for the switch to allow it to receive COA messages from ClearPass. Okay, so and then uh, the fourth step is to enable port security globally. So that's just a global command uh, called port security. And then finally, for the port security, we have to enable it on the access port. So let me just show you the interface of the access port. We have to configure the access port in hybrid mode. So we have to set set the link type to hybrid. Uh, this is the this is required so that the port can become an untagged member of different VLANs, and we can set the port as a spanning tree edge port so that the port goes into forwarding mode directly when it's connected. Uh, another thing that we can set is the MAC authentication domain, so we set it to the ClearPass domain that we have created, and we are setting the port security mode to MAC authentication. We also have to configure the VLANs and the ACLs. Let me show you the ACLs. There are two. One ACL is used for the web redirection, which is ACL 3001. So the rules allow access to the ClearPass server and DNS DHCP server and denying all other traffic. And I have another ACL that is allowing all traffic. Uh, except for the services network. Of course these rules can be different in a real life situation. That concludes the configuration of the switch. Now for clear pass. The first step is to configure the network access devices shown here. Let me go to the configuration, go to devices and let's take the Comware 7 device. So you can see that the vendor name of the Comware device is set to Cisco. At the moment of creating this video this was the required setting. In a future release this might change to another vendor to Hewlett Packard but you can still use the Cisco vendor name setting anyway. Another thing to verify is the whether the right H3C dictionary is imported into ClearPass. So let's check that one out. I've got the vendor here. And so what should be there is the H3C AV pair VSA. If this is not there, you can find the latest dictionaries on the Aruba software download site as shown here. So let me just show you the URL. It's this one and you can find the latest dictionary for H3C uh, here. Let's have a look at the profiles first. I have created two profiles. One profile is used for web redirection and the second profile is used for network access after successful second MAC authentication. So let's check out the web redirection profile first. That's this one. You can uh, you can see that the uh, VLAN assignment VSAs um, are are used, which are the default or the standard IETF uh, VSAs. But ClearPass is also using the H3C AV pair VSA. So there are two here: one that contains the redirection URL, and one that contains the ACL. It is important that the redirection URL also contains the MAC address variable, as shown here, in the typical ClearPass format. This will cause the client to send its own MAC address in the redirection URL to ClearPass so that ClearPass can register this MAC address. The other profile simply contains a VLAN and ACL assignment. This profile will be used after successful web authentication. Now for the policies. There are two policies. One that triggers the port bounce after successful web authentication and there's one policy that has a combined function for redirection and granted access. Let's take that one first. In this policy there are two rules. One rule triggers the redirect profile when the user is authenticated and this is for the initial MAC authentication 
and the other rule is triggered when there is a successful guest authentication. This means that if a client enters the right credentials on the login page, this rule is triggered. If we take a look at the port bounce policy here, you can see that two actions are performed. One is the actual port bounce, and the second one is to update the endpoint database and set the MAC address to known state. This comes in handy when the second MAC authentication takes place. Now let's have a look at the services. There are two, a MAC authentication service and a web authentication service. Let's have a look at the web authentication service first. In this service, we are authenticating against the internal guest user database. You can see here. And of course, there are many different ways to authenticate, but you know this, th this does not fall within the scope of this demo, so we're using a local repository. In the roles section, you can see that we are using the guest role mapping to enforce this service. And in the enforcement, you can see that we have assigned the port bounce policy. For the MAC authentication service, we are actually, let me show you that one, we are actually allowing all MAC addresses for the authentication part. So let me show the authentication part. We are setting it to allow all MAC authentication and we are authenticating against the endpoints repository. For the MAC authentication service, we are enforcing the redirect and access policy here. And uh, another important setting for the MAC authentication service is the used cache role setting. This setting is used by ClearPass to remember the status of a client when it disconnects and reconnects within a certain amount of time. And we also have to configure the web portal page and create some guest users. Let's uh, start with the web login page first. So I've created already one and let me just show you the settings. So what you see here is the vendor settings are set to Aruba Networks and I'm using a login method which is server initiated. We are not doing any pre-authentication checks and the other thing is the uh, yeah the login delay. Oh, well, we're setting a skin, specific skin for the web portal, and the other important one is the login delay. So, uh, if a port bounce occurs, it can take up to 25 seconds before the port becomes online again, and the second MAC authentication takes place. So this means that we have to enter a safe value for the client to load the web pages. Uh, I would say that 30 seconds is a safe value here. And then finally create a guest user. So let me show you the guest user that I've created here. So one important setting here is the account role. You can see here. So that's the assignment to the role mapping. So in this demonstration, we have mapped the service to the guest role mapping. So we have to do this with the web portal users as well. And that's it. Let's put it to the test. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the switch and enable some debugging so that you can see what's happening on the switch. So let's enable some debugging. So set terminal monitor and terminal debug and debug MAC authentication event and debug radius event. I'm now connecting a client to the Gigabit Ethernet interface 101 and I should be getting some nice debugging information here. So you can actually see that the client is connecting. And let me just wait until the debugging is over. 
Okay, so let me issue the command display Mac authentication connection interface gig 101 and what you can see here is that the uh, redirection URL and ACL is applied so that's the ACL ID and this is the redirection and you can also see the client MAC address here in the URL now I'm launching a browser and logging into the captive portal Just providing the password. And you should see some other stuff going on on the switch again. So this is actually a, a port bounce take place and another ACL. You can see the link up and down. And another ACL is pushed. And once the debugging has stopped. Let me show you the display Mac authentication connection interface gig 101 again. And what you can see now is that the auth authentication has been successful and a different ACL is pushed now. So that's the uh, successful authentication from the switch side. So let me uh, show you the access tracker in ClearPass. So for the access tracker, so what you see here is you can see three events taking place here. One Mac authentication, one web authentication, and a second Mac authentication. So let's have a look at the first Mac authentication. What you can see here is, is that the uh, redirect profile is being pushed. So let me go to the output here. Very first response. So that's the initial MAC authentication where the H3C AV pairs are pushed. You can actually also see the uh, COA message that is related to the uh, web authentication actually in this um, in this event. So you can see that. Uh, there is also a port, uh, bounce host port here. So the web authentication is pushing the update endpoint known and the bounce host port. You can see that here, subscriber command, bounce host port. And that's the Cisco AV pair. And then the third authentication which is the Mac authentication is pushing the portal Comware 7 profile which is actually the right VLAN that is pushed to the switch with and also the the ACL 3002 so this concludes the demonstration of ClearPass captive portal with Comware 7 I hope that you liked the video. If you did, don't hesitate to leave some feedback and I hope that you will visit this channel again soon. Bye bye.